Today's episode of Dungeon Crawlers Radio is brought to you by Gamers Inn, your one-stop location for all your gaming needs. Located in Lehigh City, Utah, their fun and friendly staff will be more than happy to answer any of your gaming needs. Just remember, Gamers Inn, it's where adventures begin. Broadcasting live from the DCR studio. Oh, yeah! The Geek Revolution starts here. Excellent! Get ready for the number one hit geek radio show out there. Well, it is impressive, isn't it? Because it's time for Dungeon Crawlers Radio. Alright everyone, welcome to another episode of Dungeon Crawlers, where Scott found his wallet. Yes, I have not lost and my he's wallet, not and roaring. I have not lost my keys. And he hasn't lost his mind. And That's I incredible. haven't sung during this song. No, you haven't. This, and McKay is still missing. We don't know where McKay is. McKay got lost in a time warp. Yeah, uh, let me move this closer to care. you. Alright, <laughs> so uh, yeah, no, McKay is gone <laughs> somewhere else. We don't know. But with us is special guest, Bryce it, Beatty. Beatty. All right. I want to make sure I said it right because sometimes I don't. So for those of you that uh, paid attention to to, that, to the website and to Facebook and that, uh, I put out a little uh, interview that I had done about my book, and Bryce had done that uh, with StoryHack.com. So he, he's interviewed several authors and uh, jumped into this. Plus, he just recently had a Kickstarter that funded, uh, which is called StoryHack. Right? Yes, indeed. And it ha- also has Pulp Fiction stories in it. So I wanted to bring Bryce on to talk about that and talk about Story Hack and you know why you started it all. Ooh, why I started it all. Um, well, I'm a writer as well. And as you know, I look around for, it was, I was looking for markets in which to submit my stories. Mm-hmm. And nobody was publishing the type of stories which I consider the best kind, which is just fun action adventure. Mm-hmm. Uh, stories. So I said, somebody's got, you know, we got to, we need more markets. So yeah. talked to my wife and we were like, what the heck? I'm going to give it a go. <laughs> nice. So now, is it just strictly pulp fiction type stories so or? Pulp, um, because I, I, pulp is a wide right, so, variety. Uh, you know, I fell in love with kind of that, a lot of those authors and a lot of those stories. First through old time radio. Oh somebody, yeah. When I was a kid, somebody gave me a CD set of The Shadow, and so I jumped over there. And I just really like um, a lot of the styles of those guys. Uh, and it's not that I don't like to think, because you know thinking is fine, and there's even thinking in yeah. fiction is fine. Uh, but the primary, uh, you know, my primary goal when I read is to be entertained, and so those are the guys that I found the most entertaining, uh, and as it ends up quite busy these days. And so I don't have time to read 700 page novels all the time, but I've got, I've got time to read short stories. Oh, I love yeah. short stories. Yeah. I mean, who has time anymore? Yeah. I mean, that's, that's what audiobooks are for, right? Scott? Exactly. When you're mowing your lawn, when you're driving to work, perfect. But when you actually want to sit down with a story, you know, I mean, it's just that everything's running so fast, you don't have time for it. Yeah. I mean, short stories are great because you, you can sit down and read the whole story during a lunch break or, or right. uh, ride on the bus. Um, so that's fantastic. Or the train. Or the train. Or the train. Yeah. I don't take the train. Do you take the train? I love the train. Really? The train is like, that's my writing fuel right there. I'll sit down on the train and just look at people and say, oh, I'm writing you into a story. And then sometimes I'll notice that I'm looking at them and then typing really quick and then re- looking at them and then typing more. And, and then it gets awkward. Okay. Especially when I take a photo of them, then it's even worse. Yeah. But you're you're, the, you're the reason I don't go on the train. <laughs> Okay, it's not my fault. The dude looked like a time traveler, okay? I'm, nice. I'm not lying about this. Like, he looked like he was something from the 18th century, from, from the top, little top, bowler top hat right down to his loafers. Like, it was just... You sure he wasn't going to Comic-Con? It wasn't a Comic-Con day. There were Are no you sure? cons going on. Are you sure? Yes. Okay. Awesome. Maybe. This I don't was know. just his normal day, and he was just, he seemed just out of place. Okay. So, yes, I took a photo of a time-traveling man riding the bus, and I'm not ashamed. 
We're not talking about me in this interview. We're talking about you and your short stories. This is I'm, no, this is perfect because this is a story that you should put in this magazine. As long as there's action in it and adventure, which is fine. Time traveling is by definition adventure. So as long as you're jumping over something and or punching someone in the face, that would make a good story. Hmm. Yeah, he didn't do any of that. He just stayed back and started talking. But no, you make that up. You add that in. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He just he walked up to you because nobody wants stories about real life. We all have to live real life. We want my point. I don't know what happened after he was asking. Now tell me about this. Tell me what's going on. I had like this British accent. That was not a good British accent on my part. But I'm just saying. <laughs> but he had one. He had one, uh, and it was just like time traveling Brit. I think so. Excellent. I think so. They must have already invented it. So I don't know. He's gonna break through our door any second. And start interrogating me. I'm terrified. Let's talk more about your genre. Hello. So, <laughs> so yes. Let's go back to um to story hack. Well, no, I, I love the website uh, with the, the interviews you do because you, you know, we don't do it, but you, know, you break down like every minute of every different subject well, that happens, which is fantastic. And then you throw in your own little flavor to yeah. things. The, Google's got to, you know, they've got to look at something when you do it. Yeah. So I don't have the immense re- listenership that you've got, so I've got to do something to try to drag people in. Well, yeah, it, it's just kind of funny, you know, like, I mean, just reading through the things that I did when... Uh, I don't even remember talking about half these things. And then I went back and listened, and I'm like, like oh, yeah, we did that. Well, the, yeah, the best thing was it was after we were done recording, and you're like, yeah, yeah I have a one-eyed dog. I'm like, well, how can you not mention that? And like, it's just it's normal. normal catch, you know? Yeah, like, yeah. No, and that's just that was just normal, so it's not discovery. something that comes up. And, you know, now we have rabbits. For those rabbits, yeah. too. Yeah, we didn't have, chicken, we didn't have rabbits last Let's time I talked rabbits. to you. Like and now we have rabbits, and one of them's a lion head, and my kids named him Simba. So. <laughs> so just to let you, uh, our listeners, understand, if you go to storyhack.com, you'll see exactly what they're talking about with this breakdown. They go through each podcast, and they'll actually break down exactly what they talk about and when. Yeah. Um, Which is fantastic, because you know where to go. Part, yeah. 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 <laughs> it's only half an hour long. I will yeah. admit, sometimes I'll listen to podcasts, and I'll look through, and I'll be like, okay, how long is it? Oh, it's an hour. It's a 53-minute long podcast. I just want to hear them talk about, you know... Uh, he mentions uh, Star Wars. And I know that he has a joke about that. And now you can. You can just jump right to that point. So I think this is really convenient, really nice. Daniel, how come we don't do that? Uh, because I don't have the time. Well, you want to you, you break? You can break it down. I'll give you the episode. You break it down. McKay, how do you feel about that? Hey, it's McKay's job. Uh, there we go. <laughs> volunteering <laughs> him for work while he's not here. Exactly. That's what we do. Is it wrong that I heard my name for a second there? It's <laughs> perfect. I volunteer you for work all the time. That's it. Yes. <laughs> so, I mean, what was the, the the reason you started, you know, the website and, and doing the interviews? Um, well, the website has been around forever. I, you know, I just had it as a personal blog. Oh, okay. Um, as it just ended up, I met uh, David J. West, who I think has been on your podcast. Yeah. Um, and our tastes in literature were so similar. I'm like, you know what? I would like to meet him. What's a good excuse to do that? I'll start a podcast. And then... So I went down to his house and his just amazing, uh, his office is just wall to wall books. You've been to his house? I haven't I've even been, been to his house and I'm his friend. His what the heck? <laughs> Dave, you, you've let me down. Wow, wow, wow. And then. I know. So then I, I met the publicist at Immortal Works and her house, she works from home and it's like four minutes from my office. Yeah. So then she's like, I'm going to start sending people your way and then. I figured as long as people were coming by, I'll start tracking down other authors too and see where it goes from there. Nice. No, I, it's 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 lots of fun. You learn a lot of stuff. I mean, it's you as a writer, uh, just you know the questions you ask me, uh, questions I'm sure you've asked the other uh, authors. It, you pick up stuff. I mean, that's what I did over the years doing this show. Just picked up a little bit tidbits here and there and decided, hey, that works for me. That doesn't work for me. So uh, it's fantastic. And you already have quite a few. I mean, starting off with David J. West is awesome in itself. And then you've got several others So, yeah, I've along. got two more in the can that are just waiting for me to make said detailed notes and get mm-hmm. posted. Yeah. Um, so. so how often do you post a new episode? Is it weekly <laughs> or is it when available? <laughs> when I feel like it. Awesome. <laughs> it's... So that's the schedule. When he feels like it. Yeah. I like that. It's like you're playing bingo. Is it now? Yes. No. Is it now? No. Is it now? Yes. There's three of them. Yeah. Like, psychologists say that that random reward is actually best for making people addicted. Huh. So, 
I learned so that in my like, psychology class. That's not actually why I do it. <laughs> well, you know, that's like Facebook because you get that. You usually get on and you get one. You usually get what one was name. that? <laughs> I believe that was Jeff. Um, that means it's time for me to work out a little bit. Keep my heart racing at work. I have my timer set. Our audience already knows this because I mention it like every other week that I forget to mute my computer. Um, then you'll suddenly start doing push ups. I yeah. don't know. Yeah. Yeah. What were you saying? I don't know. Until the German lady on your computer interrupted us. He is a man. Thank you very much. He was a lady last week. Okay. But I need to, yeah, I shake it up so that I, you know, pay attention. Okay. I forgot. I completely forgot we got tangented, and now that's it. That's it. Do you have any questions while I, uh, while I jump back on my train, get my train of thought back on the tracks? Yeah. So. Excellent. What I mean, so you're a writer. Um, sure. What made you decide to go into writing? Because um, it sounds like you took psychology classes. Maybe that's your that was major. A, that was a requirement. Okay, and and I know that's not your day <laughs> job. So what what got you into writing and why? Um, writing is just when I, as a kid, I always thought that it would be fun to write stories and books and whatnot. Uh-huh. And then just every time I read something, I get excited about it, and I think you know, it's where I can't even talk straight. Like, oh, man, there should be more stories like this. And I want to write one just like, you know, basically visions of fan fiction, maybe. Uh, But then when I actually sat down to write, um, then later on in life, as I grew up, actually, personal tragedy struck. It was actually a good way for me to work out a lot of deals. Mm -hmm. Um, So, and then it just keeps going from there. You know, I find stuff I like and I can't help myself. I just feel like I got stories to tell. No, I find that quite common that a lot of authors use tragedy, stuff like that. Um, you know, Bob Salvatore, uh, his brother uh, was very ill at one point, and he wrote uh, Mortalis, um, a fantastic book. But yeah, I, I find more often than not, writers use pains, you know, loss and stuff like that, and channel it into creativity in their writing, which is fantastic. Well, it's a great way to be able to deal with something that you're going through, and emotions already have. There's yeah. so many waves and. And it's just, it's like a thunderstorm brewing in your chest. And this is a way to get it out, to deal with it, to come to terms with reality. Yes. No, I agree. So. I don't do that. <laughs> Not that I speak from experience. <laughs> hmm. I still haven't seen anything that you've written yet. No. No, that's because Do you know for certain that he writes then? He says he does. Well, everybody says they do. I Why am I saying that? that? <laughs> I shouldn't be saying that. I, yes, of course I do. You just haven't seen it because I'm not comfortable with it. No, I do write. Um, but that is what all fake writers. Do However, so I have seen him make a movie that he did write. So okay, we don't need to go into that. There's some kind of um, Ghostbusters. Go, for, go I, look on YouTube. For look that. up for Ghostbusters SLC. I also write. I also Scott write doesn't have a beard. It's weird. I also write commercials for the travel company that I work for. Yes. Oh, well, that's <laughs> you know there's that's that's still writing. That's still writing. Oh, it's boring, but you know, it's not as cool as <laughs> no killing Scott off. Too, but Stop no. trying to kill me. <laughs> Daniel <laughs> loves bringing up the fact that he's going to base a character off me. And then kill I already me. have. Stop it. You're already in the book. See, he wants to kill me, though. But that's, you didn't that's die. That's a sign of true buddyship, though. What, know? killing someone in a yes, book? Yes, killing them in a book. Then don't like me anymore. <laughs> because I don't want to die. Even if it's in a story form. My friend, you actually, died. In, in elementary or in middle school? High school. She wrote a story with all of our friends, and then she killed us all off one by one. Sadie, I'm still stalking you. I know there's a there's a killer behind those eyes, <laughs> but it was it was it was surprisingly well written um, for a high school student. In fact, I think she was in middle school at the time when she started it, and it's it it was really fun until huh. one by one everybody died. I felt did she talk talking to you after she killed you in the story or? Well, oh yeah, she talked was, to all like of just pretended that you weren't there anymore when she killed you in the story. Oh, that would have been funny. Yeah, that, that, that would have been. actually. Been I'm, I'm going to end our friendship right here by killing you in a, something that I've written. And we're done. Yeah. Or even if it she was killed one of our friends by putting a scratch and sniff snicker, sticker on the bottom of a swimming pool, and she dove in. She drowned. Isn't that it's a, like blonde a blonde joke? joke. <laughs> I think so. It is a blonde joke. Wow. I think so, but that's how she killed her. Okay. It was tragic. Well. <laughs> I don't know how that would work. I think that actually qualifies as a Pulp Fiction story right there. But see, I wouldn't have done it that way. you got to make it lurid. Oh, boy, here he goes. Here he goes. Do you see that glint yeah. in his eyes? Do you see how excited he is? Jumps into the water. Glass slides over the top. 
Oh, that happened too. But she so that she can't get can't get up to the surface, and then you unleash the piranhas. Piranhas. There are piranhas, piranhas now. I have eaten piranha. He's got to overkill. Really? So Vengeance. Yes. Revenge, right? Eat yeah. that before so they eat you. Right. Is it actually good? Um, it was pretty rubbery. Wasn't it rubbery? rubbery? Well, so is octopus right. and squid. So. Well, so I, I think it depends on who they ate first, right? It's entirely possible. Okay. So they ate some. They ate, they ate rubber man. I don't know. There's some. <laughs> Yeah. He is a superhero. Yeah, I don't know. Or plastic. Man. Yeah. All right. That's true. That's true. Hmm. Where did you meet Piranha? Because in now Brazil. In Brazil. Oh, well. Which is where they're commonly in, in found. In the Amazon River Basin. Yeah. We have the Brazilian grills. Do you think that one of them have a. Uh, I doubt it. I would, try. I would call ahead first. Yeah. Ooh. Maybe we should do that. You should podcast at a restaurant eating weird random stuff. Oh, I would totally do that. <laughs> yeah, but who would totally Go. listen? And this is sushi. <laughs> and this is a lion. <laughs> this is Scott this is... eating alligator. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I had We're going to blindfold Scott and feed him food and not tell him what it is and see if he can guess. Ooh, ooh, <laughs> I like this idea. <laughs> this sounds fun. It involves me eating food. so I'm And then we got to film it. Just no carrots or pineapple. Yeah, we can YouTube I'm and podcast it. That's right. You can't, why? What? what? I'm allergic to pineapple and carrots. Pineapple? Oh. You're allergic to pineapple? So in other words, you just don't like them. That's no, the I love them. Thing I've ever heard. Oh, I love them. There's nothing better than waking up Christmas morning and slicing open a pineapple. I'm telling you right now. What? 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 Pineapple on Christmas? <laughs> What's wrong with you people? Yeah, it's in your stocking. What? What? <laughs> what? What? It's a big piece of fruit that fills your entire stocking. You guys didn't have a Christmas morning pineapple? What's wrong with you? No. Growing up, I always had an orange, which I, I always threw in the garbage. <laughs> But I had pineapple. I've never had pineapple. I've had peanuts. The pineapple would make sure you didn't get as much candy, though. Or exactly. stuff in your stockings. Toys. Apparently our parents didn't love us. I mean, Santa didn't love us. Wow. A pineapple. Yes. You definitely yes. were an only child. All right. <laughs> hey, it could have been money. It could have been toys. Instead, it was a pineapple. Dude, I would have rather had money and toys. I love my pineapple. Transformers. <laughs> but you're allergic Prime. to the pineapple. So I grew allergic work? to it around 12. Oh, it was a developed allergy. Yeah. Oh, you grew because they gave you too much pineapple as a kid. No, it wasn't their fault. It's a natural. <laughs> no, 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 no. It was because you got once you got pineapple once on a year Christmas. Is not too much pineapple. You tell me you only ate pineapple once a year. Yes. You didn't eat pineapple. You didn't on have pizza? it on your pizza. That doesn't Ew. Count. It's cooked, it pineapple count. does not belong on pizza unless there is crunchy bacon with it. No, not mm. at all. It's very good. <laughs> oh, it's amazing. It's the best. Pizza. Chicken wow. bacon pineapple. We just Ew. went. We just went on a really weird tangent. Oh, are you saying we're coming back from this weird tangent? We're coming yeah, back. Touch the carrot yet. <laughs> <laughs> we're going to skip that one. I'm oh, going to make a joke about not touching his carrot. <laughs> no. no. No, no, no. I'm allergic to carrots. No, no, no. We're moving away from the carrot. Off the chair. We're leaving the carrot alone. We're going back to talk about Story Act because, wow. All right. Are you the carrots? Yeah. So... <laughs> We'll save it for later. Anyway. I don't know where to go from there. <laughs> so, story act. Yes. <clears throat> Best people magazine you'll ever read. Yes. Okay, so where can people order it? Um, well, right now you can still get a free ebook version on storyhack.com slash issue zero, all spelled out. Um, so if you want to see what kind of stuff we're going to do, I just did the first Kickstarter, so here in a couple of months, uh, the next issue will come out. And it's just chock full of action adventure, all sorts of fun and craziness. There's a PI that's a mm-hmm. werewolf. There's, uh, we have a biblical setting where Goliath comes back as a zombie. Uh, there's oh all God. sorts of great, just fun, entertaining stories. And, and you, you have, see them if you can like. Can you give it. us that link one more time? Uh, storyhack.com slash issue zero, spelled out. Or if you don't want to spell that out, you can just go to storyhack.com, click on the magazine. That's right. And oh. it says issue zero, and you can click a link there. Oh, okay. But, I mean, you got Jay Bar- uh, Barnson on here. You've got Julie Frost, David J. West, uh, I mean, several other so, great yeah, authors. I got, a lot of, I got very fortunate, and I actually accepted both Jay's and Julie's before I knew they lived in the valley. Yeah. Um, and that, so that was pretty exciting for me to learn. Hey, they're close, and I'll actually get they're to meet them. close, and you can meet them. So, I mean... When you put it out there, the casting call for short stories, did you just did you have to fight to get them in, or did you just have a flood um, of stories? Well, it helped a lot that I was already friends with David J. West. Yeah. Because then he had some other friends that are kind of in the pulp fiction crowd, so they kind of spread the word pretty fast. And then you know I just chased after it, put links up everywhere where you put links for calls for submissions. 
Nice. And now was the selection process difficult? Oh, that was, I expected that like, oh, maybe I'll get 10 or 12 submissions. It was about 100. So it was, wow. <laughs> it was a lot of reading. Yeah. When does this first one come out? Um, well, the issue zero, the, the preview issue is out right now. So. Well, the, the, and the new issue, the one new that was issue. kickstarted. And the one that's kick it was just, the kickstarter just finished like a day and a half ago. Okay. Yeah, I was just looking at it. You so about broke two your months. goal. Yeah. So in two months, that's still. Well, I'm a one-man well. show. And I'm no, no, that, I'm just, that's what I'm saying. <laughs> I realize it's just you, and that's still a pretty good turnaround. I mean, I that's, know some people that take months. Well, when I knew what I wanted, and I have the technical skills of, of mm-hmm. layout and everything, so I don't have to wait for anyone. Oh, so you you're so doing everything really? Yeah. You well, are the one-man show. I don't, I don't actually show. do the painting. It's a one-man band, right? There. I know enough. You know, I know enough about finding and hiring somebody to do the cover that I can nice. get that done. So. Now, uh, now, I can the magazine itself, is it going to be just like a standard magazine, uh, you know, with the fill, or is it going to be kind of paper, or, or I mean, so what are you doing? So, always ebook and paper. Um, I'm really going for the, the historical nature of it, so it comes out in the same size. Uh, what nowadays is a comic book size, 7 by 10, Okay. Um, is what the original Pulps came out in, so I'm trying to do that. Next issue, there will be interior art as well. Um, there wasn't this time because the artist I hired failed me miserably. Oh, uh, that's too bad. Back. Why do you look at me when you say that? I I'm didn't... sorry. I'm not... When I because Scott, it's easy to look at you. What the heck? People enjoy looking at me. And say, <laughs> you have failed me miserably. Miserably. Not you personally. We have people <laughs> beeping at me. Oh, My computer just wants is beeping. To talk into this show. That, that's the thing. Um, okay, so how? Is this run sold out then, or can you still order this? Oh, um, you can like always always? get it now on Amazon if you want the paper edition. Okay. It's on Amazon. So. Okay. Yeah. I'm a big search like, for story hack. Uh, I'm a big like uh, first edition kind of guy. Because <laughs> there's nothing wrong with that. I like having nothing the wrong with copies that. of things. I just, All right. I like the feel. Okay. Now, is there an option for those that didn't jump on the Kickstarter um, to get it later? Yeah, of course. Okay. I'll be selling it later. That's the whole point, is for the magazine to become self-sustaining. Sweet. So. Very nice. All right, folks. Well, we've gone everywhere. It's been crazy. We've talked about this, that. We've talked about pineapple an- allergies and, and Scott's carrot. No, we did not. <laughs> have Excuse me. We avoided Scott's all right, we, carrot. We all the people out there who are allergic to pineapple and carrot and or carrot, there is help. And you are not downtrodden or cast aside. Like how everybody here apparently wants to do. You just be strong. Resist so this, the carrot. Very random Resist the pineapple. Is this allergies. where you're saying you're not alone? You are not alone. I was you just singing. Not alone. There we go. There we go. See, I'm not the singer this time. All right. I sing last. So go check out storyhack.com. Uh, follow Bryce and uh, you know, pick up the free copy. Uh, you're going to enjoy it. It's awesome. There's some really great talent here. And if you didn't fund, help fund the Kickstarter, you know, pay attention. You'll be able to pick up issue one. And I'm sh- you're local here in Salt Lake area. I'm sure there's going to be multiple conventions you can pick it up at. If not, uh, I'm sure it'll be available on Story Hack to, to purchase. That's right. So and support this because it's awesome, and these are going to be great stories. So thank you. Uh, with that said, uh, we're out of here. Fight the carrot shame. Really. Carrot shame. That's right. Is that a ginger joke?